Hi there, I'm Dr. Francesca Zampollo and today I want to give you 7 food design ideas. This is for those of you who want to start doing food design and are looking for a few ideas or for those of you who have already been doing food design for a while but maybe want to try something different that they haven't already done. So here are my 7 food design ideas which come from looking at food trends for 2017. One of the biggest food trends for 2017 is meat substitutes. This is showing us that there are more and more people willing and interested in trying something different, something different from meat products. And this is an area where there is a lot of investigation going on and where I think it makes sense to keep investigating. We find, for example, products like Beyond Meat and the Impossible Burgers. Both of these propose products that look exactly like meat, but are made of plants. Often the argument here is, why should you make something that looks like meat if it's not meat? Well, these are products for those people who are meat lovers, but are starting to have more concerns for their health and the health of the planet. So I think these products are important to facilitate the transition for this type of people from a meat-based diet to a plant-based diet. So, food engineers are doing a lot out there. Now, food designers too should come into the picture and design products and services that use this concept. The emergence of so many products that are now meat substitutes also means that there are more and more people interested in a plant-based diet. There are more and more vegetarians around the world, vegans and raw foodies. There's more and more people eating meat only once or twice a week. This means that this is an area that is perfect for food designers. It's growing and we need a lot of good ideas for products, but most importantly, for services. The second trend that food designers should be aware of is modernized traditions. In other words, there is a growing interest in modern food that talks about people's tradition and culture. We see, for example, that there is a lot of interest for projects like Grandma's Project by Jonas Pariente, whom gave us a keynote talk at the third international conference on food design. I'll put a link in the description below. People are interested and delighted in watching grandmothers cooking their recipes for their grandchildren. On the same line, we have food services like Mommy Foodies, a food catering that brings grandmother's food into the event. They invite grandmothers to come and cook the food that they will serve at your event. Another food trend for 2017 is zero waste. This shouldn't come as a surprise. This is not a trend only for 2017. It was a trend in 2016, 15 as well, but it's growing and growing and getting more interest as it should. And therefore, it's definitely a space where food designers have plenty of opportunities to design concepts for products and food services. There are now a lot of restaurants that embrace a zero waste approach. And probably one of the most famous restaurants is Silo or Silo one of the pioneer in this new type of approach, but definitely something that more and more restaurants and food services and food businesses in general should follow. Within this zero waste approach, there is definitely space for products besides services. And we have an example with Ruby's Relish, companies that makes relish out of food that would otherwise have gone into the bin. And probably one of my favorite sentences that we can find in their website is Some say it's a lot of rubbish. We take that as a condiment. Zero waste also means zero food waste specifically. And a lot has been done to reduce food waste in the domestic uh, environment. There are websites, for example, like Love Food Hate Waste that give plenty of resources to people on how to reduce their food waste at home and also recipes to use the food that otherwise would be wasted. Another food trend is crafted goodies. In other words, people seem to really love anything that is crafted, local or artisanal. And so we have seen how many products have emerged with the word crafted or artisanal or local in their label. 
Well, I would urge you to think about not just using the word to put it in the label, but really to think about products and services that are really crafted, artisanal and local. We are attracted by products that are sincere and transparent. So let's bring more and more products and services that are really crafted, artisanal and local. There is also a new trend for virtual restaurants and home restaurants. For example, Epic is a restaurant not restaurant that delivers restaurant food quality at home. It works exactly like a restaurant, but it does not have one location. You can't go and eat at the restaurant, you only eat at home. And there's also services like Yuma, who put in touch people who want a home-cooked meal delivered at their house with people who are able to cook home-cooked meal and deliver them at other people's houses. There are no restaurants here, there are only homes. The home of the person who wants to do what they love for a living, cooking, and the home of the person who wants a home-cooked meal. Another food trend for food designers to be aware of is meal prep. So more and more people are now interested in home-cooked meals. But in a world where we work 12 hours a day and there's very little time, we need to be taught how to effectively manage our grocery, our cooking and our time. This so far has been a space for food bloggers mainly, but I think that it's a brilliant space for food designers. And finally, we should talk about communal food. People are social creatures. We like to be together. And so we find things like Mama Bake, which is probably more of a movement today. It started as a group of moms, a group of women, getting together to cook for the entire week. This was a way to join forces and in three or four hours to cook for the entire week for all their families. And also, of course, this was a way to get together and talk and cook. And we can find brilliant services like fleet farming. So let's say that you live in a city and you have a garden or a plot of land that you don't really have the time to look after. You lend it to these people, they create a fruit and vegetable garden, you get some of the produce and the rest is sold at the market. The food doesn't travel miles and miles before it gets onto people's table and people get together. They talk and they grow vegetables. Here we are. These were my seven ideas for food designers. Don't forget to subscribe to never miss another video on food design. And if you're interested in learning how to come up with ideas for your food design business, check out my free course, Food Design 101. Thank you for watching. Have a lovely day and happy food design.